What is up everybody? This is your guy Kali and welcome back to Budget Buys. And today I'm going to be talking about the EUSO Z11 RGB 60% mechanical gaming keyboard. Despite the plain box, you can tell this is the RGB model because it has a rainbow in the upper right hand corner, unlike the original box. Also, my experiences with this particular keyboard have kind of validated a theory that I had about the original Z11 that I kind of hinted at in that review, but more about that later. I want to keep you in suspense a bit. Inside the box, you receive the keyboard itself, the manual, an angled USB Type-C cable with a USB 2.0 connector, a keycap puller, a replacement cap for both the spacebar and the escape key, a key switch puller, as well as two replacement switches. Now, before I go any further, I want to take a moment to talk about the differences between the Z11 RGB and the original Z11, because they go a bit deeper than the fact that the backlight on this keyboard can change colors. So let me slide my RGB out of the way for a second and bring in my original Z11 that I covered previously. Now, one similarity shared between these two keyboards is the fact that you can choose between red linear switches and blue clicky switches. And as an added bonus, the keycaps are going to have the same color pattern shift between the two types of switches. So if you decide to go with red switches, you're going to end up with a keycap set that is mostly gray. Whereas if you choose the blue keycaps, you're going to get a set that is mostly black. Now, we're going to get to one of the major differences. In the case of the original Z11, it comes with Hua No switches, whereas the Z11 RGB, let me just get in there, there we go, comes with Outimu switches. The other major difference between these keyboards has to do with the function layer, which I'll be talking about for this one in a moment, but the main thing to keep in mind is that the F1 and F2 you get in the original Z11, as well as the ability to set your own custom light mode built into the keyboard itself, are both absent from the Z11 RGB. All right, that's enough focusing on the differences between the two generations of Z11. Let's get back to focusing on the Z11 RGB. At least for now. First off, this keyboard is wired mode only. There is no wireless connectivity inside. And you'll find the USB Type-C connector right here on the edge. So that means that EUSO made the right decision in including the angled USB Type-C cable. I'm actually really thankful for that. Next up on the back, we have my favorites the adjustable feet, and interestingly, the Z11 RGB is going through its tribal tattoo phase. In fact, it is the exact same tribal tattoo as seen on the original Z11. The only real way to tell these two apart back here is the label on the Z11 RGB actually says RGB right there. And back to the front so that we can talk about the function layer, everyone's favorite part of the video, right? When you hold down the function key and hit any one of the number keys, you're going to get F1 through F10. Over on hyphen, we have F11. On equals, we have F12. Left bracket is insert. Right bracket is delete. Semicolon is home. Apostrophe is end. M is going to cycle through various brightnesses for your backlights. Comma is going to cycle through various speeds for the backlight modes. Period is going to be page up and forward slash is going to be page down. Holding down function and hitting W, A, S, or D are going to be your arrow keys. Function plus the space bar is going to allow you to choose the color of your backlights. More on that later. Function plus the right alt is going to change your backlight mode. And the escape key is actually going to serve multiple purposes. If you just hold down function and tap escape, that's going to be your grave key. Function shift and escape is going to give you a tilde. And if you hold down function and long press escape for a couple of seconds, that's going to set your keyboard back to factory default. Also, some of you might have noticed that I didn't mention print screen, and that's because there is no print screen on the function layer of this keyboard. Instead, you're going to have to do Windows, Shift, and S in order to take a screenshot. 
Last, but certainly not least, is the fact that if you hold down function and hit Windows, that's going to lock the Windows key as well as your app key. And they will remain locked until you hit function and Windows again. Also, when you do that, the Windows key will light up white so that you know the lock is engaged. Now, let's talk hot swap because as this is in EU so board, it definitely has that feature. Let me go ahead and get this key off. There we go. I definitely much prefer wire pullers to the plastic pullers, and I most definitely prefer these tweezer pullers to the included horseshoe shaped puller. So let me just go ahead and get on in there, which I should mention, it's not easy through a viewfinder. Yeah, there we go. And as with pretty much every other low cost mechanical keyboard, the style of hot swap in use here is sleeve style. And as such, there are a few things to keep in mind. First off is the fact that, as you can see, there are no additional holes in there, so this is not going to be a five pin compatible keyboard. It is three pin compatible only. Also, because this is sleeve style hot swap, it means that you're even more limited when it comes to the kinds of switches you can use. Not only can you only use three pin switches, but you can only use Altimu switches as well as their various clones. You cannot use Cherry switches or their clones because the pins are just a little bit eh, too fat to go in. Of course, if you wanted to file down or cut down the metal contacts on a cherry switch or a Gatoron switch or a Kale switch and so on and so forth, you could make it fit, but you're probably just better off going with Aotimu, Red Dragon, and I believe Akko CS and their compatriots. All right, let's talk theories, because I've got one for both the original Z11 as well as the RGB edition. So in my review of the original Z11, I mentioned how it has all of the same features as the Red Dragon K630 non-RGB edition, with the only real difference outside of the keycaps being the fact that the K630 has pink LEDs, whereas the Z11 has yellow LEDs. But since my recording of that video, I've come to believe that this is actually a hardware clone, or at the very least, it comes out of the same manufacturer and they just changed a couple of small things. And the time I've spent with the Z11 RGB has validated that theory, at least in my mind, because turns out the Z11 RGB is a hardware clone or case swap of the Red Dragon K617, AKA the Fizz. First off, you'll notice that each and every one of the function layer keys is exactly the same. The next thing that makes me think that this is a clone is the way you change the backlight color on both of these keyboards. Give me a second to plug these in and also apologize in advance for the fact that I'm using my camera that absolutely hates the LEDs in the Fizz. Like I said, this camera hates these LEDs. Fortunately, I will be changing up my camera for the LED test in this video, but for now, just bear with it. If I want to change the color of my backlights, what I need to do on the Fizz is hold down the function key, hit the space bar, and now every single key on the keyboard is a different color. Whichever one I hit, that's gonna be the color of every single key on the keyboard. But if I go back and then hit the space bar, it's going to give me a rainbow effect. Coincidentally, if I do that on the EUSO Z11 RGB, it's exactly the same. Go back and accidentally hit the wrong key. There we go, back to rainbow. But you know what? This might still seem like 
a bit of a coincidence to some of you. So for my final observation, let's just say that the programming software for the Red Dragon Fizz actually recognizes the Z11 RGB as a Red Dragon Fizz. I'm able to completely rebind this keyboard and change up the LEDs just like I am with the Fizz. Heck, it even has the same glitch as the Fizz, where if I assign custom colors on the keyboard, the app key stops working. But it'll start working again if I hold down function and do a factory reset. So, yeah. Future Cly here with a bit of an update on my Z11 RGB is a K617 theory, because I have even more verification of this theory in addition to the software compatibility I spoke about just a moment ago. First off is a little feature I discovered while prepping for some reviews of the new Red Dragon Bullet switches, and that's the fact that underneath the space bars on both of these keyboards, back in a moment, there's this little cutout in the base plate that just so happens to be situated right above the serial numbers on the PCB. You'll notice that on the Z11 RGB, it says 8551-C US UK BR V1, and right below that it says 20210608. And if we go over to the K617, it also says 8551-C US UK BR V1 2021-0608. So these have the same motherboard and the same firmware as demonstrated by the fact that the K617 software identifies the Z11 as a K617. And right after I made that discovery, I was contacted by EUSO in order to review the wireless version of the Z11 RGB. Honestly, I didn't expect this to turn into a trilogy. But the important part of that story is that in their initial email, they talked about how they are the same manufacturer as Red Dragon. And I doubly verified this by going to EYSPC.com which is the English version of the EYSPC.CN listed on the back of the Z11 RGB and the Z11 Monochrome. And while the English version of the website is still very much under construction, on the About Us page it talks about how the parent company of EUSO also owns Red Dragon. Last but not least, if you go to EYSPC.CN, you'll find customization software for all of the models of the Z11. Though you'll more than likely have to run the website through a translation plugin for your browser if you don't read Chinese. Side note, the customization software for the EUSO Z11 monochrome version that's on that website is not compatible with the one sold on Amazon. Sorry to get your hopes up but the version for the Z11 RGB is compatible with the one from Amazon, and also comes with an English version of the installer, so yay. This software is compatible with both the Z11 RGB as well as the K617 Fizz, and it gets even better. Because this is actually a newer version of the programming software for the K617 that was given a slight update and a new skin, and it fixes the app key glitch that is present in the K617 as well as the Z11 RGB if you use the K617 programming software. So if you rebind your keys using the EUSO software, you'll still be able to use the menu key. Here we have the Z11 RGB software, and we're going to start off with the LED settings. To get to those, you're going to need to click the checkbox next to the word light on the opening screen. Here you'll find a drop down menu that'll let you quickly select between the different light modes built into the keyboard, as well as the settings for brightness, speed, and color, which can be selected either from the quick select boxes, the palette entering your own RGB value, or just clicking the checkbox next to RGB if you just want your keyboard to be in rainbow mode. In addition to the built-in light modes, you also have access to a self-defined mode. Here you're able to select what color you want each individual key to be, and you have five different groups per keyboard profile. So you can quickly jump between light settings in case you don't want to have to redo everything each and every time you want to change things up. Speaking of profiles, this software gives you access to three quick select profiles as well as the ability to import and export an unlimited number. Now let's go back to the key settings. 
Here you're able to change what each and every key on the keyboard does, though you can't change things up on the function layer. In order to rebind a key, what you need to do is click it, and then you're presented with a couple of options. Over here on the key assignment tab, you're able to rebind the key to any single key press with or without modifiers. Over on the media key tab, you're able to assign one of multiple commands to the key using this drop down menu. And over on the macro tab, you're able to set a macro to the key. Of course, I don't have any macros right now, so to change that, we need to go over to the macro editor. In order to make a new macro, you're gonna to need to right-click the macro list on the left-hand side, and then click New Macro. Of course, from the right-click menu, you're also able to create a new macro folder, as well as import and export macros. Once you click New Macro, you're going to name it, and then select whether or not you wanna record the delays between your key presses, as well as how you want it to behave. Do you want it to run a fixed number of times per key press or just keep going until you release the key? Once you've made that decision, go ahead and click Start Record, hit your keys, and then click Stop Record. Also, if you wanted to, you can insert events from this drop-down menu in between the different key presses, and that includes mouse clicks. Now that we have our macro, let's go ahead and select our key again. This time, go to the Macro tab, select our macro from the menu, and then hit OK. Once this is done, every time I hit the A key, it's going to type out fart, because I'm mature. And when you finally tire of the key typing out fart every time you hit it, you can just select the key again and hit the reset button at the top of this dialog box. This will reset just this particular key, but if you find yourself wanting to reset the entire keyboard, there is the restore button at the bottom left-hand side of the software. And there you have the EUSO Z11 RGB, a little 60% mechanical gaming keyboard with your choice of red or blue switches, hot swap, and reprogrammable keys. That also retails for about $36 as of the recording of this video. And if you're interested in this keyboard, I'm going to go ahead and put some Amazon affiliate links for it down in the description below. Now, because I definitely dragged on for quite a bit thanks to wanting to confirm some theories in this video, I think now is the time where I should say, until next time, this is your guy, Cly, signing off.